Hey everyone, it's Scott from startmedia.com and in this video I'm going to be covering a plugin that I was asked to cover and it was a little while ago and I made the video but I didn't like the way the video came out so I'm redoing it and the plugin has gotten quite a bit of updates. It is a Google Site Kit. Site Kit is an amazing way of keeping track of your website's ranking in Google search and for keeping track of your analytics. It basically combines all the Google services into one and it's exploded in popularity since its release. This is actually my preferred way to integrate analytics into WordPress over competition such as Monster Insights, which I will be doing a video on, and using things like Share This, or even just randomly pasting the analytics script into the header or adding it to insert headers and footers. The primary reason is, is it combines multiple forms of analytics. It combines the data from Search Console and it merges that with the data that you get in the in the Google Analytics itself. I accidentally network activated this. So we're going to be setting it to regular activates by going to the website directly. Since I'm doing this on an actual live site, the site doesn't get that much traffic. I barely even updated. I haven't touched it in years. But we are going to be using it as a illustration because I want to get want to give some information of how this works and I want to give some reference point to how this works. When you install it, you'll get a nice little pop-up here. You could choose to give them anonymous data. I do it so that way it helps them. Google tracks everything you do anyways. You'll be asked to sign in with your Google account. This automatically sets up Search Console. So if you haven't registered your website with Google Search Console and you don't know how, the Search Console is what used to be known as Webmaster Tools. You just go ahead here, it'll sign in, and it will set up the Search Console property. You choose the email address that you're doing it on. This is a personal website, so I'll use it for my personal email. Go ahead, I'm gonna sign in and allow. Once you do that, it says that I'm a verified owner and then you choose to allow access to the Google account. We're gonna allow that. If you have any security settings in your Google account, you will get an email, you don't have to worry about it. And then you're gonna to go to your dashboard. Now, even though that this website doesn't get virtually any traffic from what I know, it'll still pull in data that you can gather. So it'll tell you your impressions, your clicks, and it looks like there wasn't all that much data to go with since it was set up fairly recently. When you get a popular website, it'll show you your impressions in search and the number of clicks. It'll list out your most popular post, and I'll show you this on another website that I have had it set up on, but we wanna finish the installation process. You can connect Google AdSense if you have an AdSense account and you're using AdSense ads on the website. What this does is it will add, if the snippet is not detected, the Google Auto Ads snippet, which automatically inject ads on the front end. Some themes this works perfect in, other themes, not so much. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna be enabling that service, but it's really straightforward. It'll also pull in your general data showing you how much maybe a post earns, your CPM, and the earnings that the website has generated. So if you're somebody who gets most of the revenue from AdSense, this is a really good way of tracking how much you're making on the website. And it also combines with the other analytics to help illustrate what posts are bringing you in revenue and what's actually getting traffic and working for your visitors. When you wanna connect the analytics service, you go ahead and you click connect service. You have to do it to the same Gmail account as your first one. You cannot use two separate accounts. You're gonna go ahead and click allow. And what it's going to do is basically just give you a nice drop down. It's gonna try and find an existing property. It doesn't look like it's found an existing property for me. So I'm just gonna do this random website on here that I also own and I'm gonna configure the analytics. This will pull in the data from that analytics channel. Unfortunately, actually it looks like there is some data from this analytics and it's not doing too well. But as you can see, it pulls in that data. One thing you need to keep in mind is you have to make the analytics property before you set it up in SiteKit. If you don't do that, it will not work. And then you need to make sure that it's also accessible for you and that you're using the same email address so that way you can choose it. Finally, there's the PageSpeed Insights service, which you can connect here. What this does is it will allow you to effectively just run PageSpeed Insights on the homepage or your sub pages to see what your performance looks like. PageSpeed Insights isn't a perfect tool, but the ability to pull in the data into your backend without ever needing to leave the website is pretty, pretty useful if you're working on it. That way you don't have to get distracted and you can just see the improvement. As you can see, this website that I haven't touched could really stand to use some improvement. I think there is some form of advertising on here, so this may be the primary reason for the slowdown, but even still, it's not doing too well. 
Um, really, this is a particularly useful site when you're trying to determine how much traffic your website is getting. I have another website over here and I write about general cars and whatnot. And it is a site that I'm using to help illustrate how writing specific types of content and structuring it can work out very well for your website. We're gonna just try my email and uh, see if I can guess my password today. No, apparently that email address is not the email I use. So now we gotta go into the guessing game. That worked, I can totally live with that. So as you can see, I had Sidekit connected to this website and I haven't posted content in about the past month, mostly just because this type of niche doesn't do particularly well with the current crisis going on in the world. But as you can see, it needs me to reconnect with my Sitekit data. It looks like this is because I'm over the non-HTTPS version. We're going to just open that. And naturally, I mistype it. Reopen this, see if we can go ahead and get this to work. And it wants me to sign back in. This is why you always have your redirect set up. And... Aren't passwords great? Alrighty. Now we come over here and it's checking for compatibility and it says your site may not be ready. Looks like you're using a caching plugin. We don't have any problem with that. We're going to sign in like we would always click here with the sign in data. It's gonna automatically pull it in from the account that it's associated with. We're gonna go here, allow, and it's just gonna pull in the same data just like we just performed. And it looks like it's already been set up and it can already access it because we allowed it in the past and all the services are connected. The site is actually not accepted for AdSense, but I did enable it for comparison's sake. So as you can see, this website has its data being pulled in. The impressions count are up by 115% over the past 28 days. You can filter the data up here to get a better overview and understanding of what, how your website's performing over time. If you set it to the past 90 days, I don't even think there's 90 days worth of analytics, but if we go ahead and we run it just to see where it's sitting, it will go ahead and ref update all the information, excluding PageSpeed Insights, and break it down for you. Looks like it ha it's struggling to do that, so we'll just set it to 14 days. Since we can prove that the 28 day period worked, and here we go. So over the past two weeks, traffic impressions are up by 21%, clicks are up by 23%, but the unique visitors from search is down 6.4%. Oh, this was the that was that looks like the data from the past 90 days. So it's up 12,000 percent in the past three months because it didn't exist three months ago, and it tells me what content is performing the best and what's getting the most impressions. So that way you can determine what your site is ranking for and which of those posts are getting the most clicks. So my most popular content is the homepage. That's normally about right. And then does this vehicle have Wi-Fi built in? Is my most popular one? And then it was basically addressing a bunch of questions for different vehicles. Really, it's a really useful plugin, especially once you're fully connected, you're using AdSense, you can pull in all the data and help it make help you make better decisions for your website. I would not use any other plugin for integrating Google Analytics unless for some reason I had to. Really just the ability to get all the data in a easy to way understand that you don't have to worry about you're able to get exactly what you need for any post or page, even through the admin bar. If you come to a page it'll, and you hover over the site kit data, it will pull in the data for you. And then you're able to fully understand how each page is performing from an analytics standpoint, and that can eventually help you make educated decisions. If you have any questions about this, you can feel free to ask me in the comments below, but really if you're using something like Monster Insights or really any other analytics plugin, I just suggest switching to SiteKit. It's just that much better for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.